Yeah, welcome back. Uh, it's still the run-up, and today we are, our concern is on vote buying. You know that it's uh, four days, 12 hours, to the election proper, uh, presidential election, National Assembly elections, that is the, the Senate and the House of uh, Assembly. They are going to, House of Representatives, sorry. They are going to, they, they, there's going to be election into these offices, offices of the president and offices of the senators and the House of Rep members. And we're just worried about one thing that has been on the mind of Nigerians. Whether you talk about the cash crunch, <clears throat> people relate it to vote buying. When you talk about corruption, people relate it to vote buying. When you talk about uh, a, a free and fair election, people talk about uh, vote buying as well. So it worries us. Now that we have the BVAS, a lot of people had their confidence raised because BVAS, according to them, might in some ways help to mitigate this ugly incident of vote buying. But it seems the politicians are strategizing. And like they say, if the birds learn to f fly without perching, the hunter will learn to shoot without missing. Well, if that is the case here now, we are yet to find out because the day is very close by. We have also to discuss with us here on the show today, uh, Mr. Alexter Wilcox, a public affairs analyst. Mr. Wilcox, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Thanks for being on the run-up. Yeah. Okay, uh, a quick one now. We're talking vote buying. Do you think it is something that we can overcome in this election? Sincerely, the entire concept of vote buying to me is this sounds very... I've not been able to place any logical um, analysis on what vote buying represents or what it entails. Maybe because I've not been, I've not experienced vote buying. I've been a voter, at least in the through, throughout this uh, dispensation of our uh, is it for the public? I've been a voter since 1999, and then I've not been approached by anyone or been or see where vote buying to place take place. Uh, yes, I keep hearing it. But votes have been bought. Sincerely, how how do you buy a vote by inducing people, maybe with uh, cash or whatever? I think from onset, even through the electionary, people are, if, if, if what is happening to electionary campaign is inducement, then votes are already being bought because people share a lot of gift items, people share fiscal, people share t shirt umbrella, all those things. Some people share packed food and packed rice and everything. And so I think the cost of vote buying is not only by money, but even all those that are doing build up to the election. Mobilizing people to come for rallies is up. I think it's all part of vote buying. If not unnecessary on their day of election, when they say people say they give one thousand naira to those on the line, I, I've not seen it sincerely. And so, if we're looking at vote buying just limited to that election day when people give one thousand naira, then we have we, we've lost the track of vote buying. If all this that has been happening, people have been holding town hall meetings, people have been having campaigns all over the place. Some people visit churches. Uh, uh, um, uh, some uh, some some unconfirmed, unverified report says people donated money to churches through their association. So so vote buying has if so we must see vote buying in a broader context other than what happened on election day. If you go to a community and you donate money for the uh, age grade association, you donate money for the uh, for the for the to the international institution, you already don't vote buying. So this idea of limiting vote buying concept to only on the election day when people queue on the line, I think for me that is narrowing the the, the, the subject. So uh, we must see it in a broader concept. So you can't do away with it. If, if that you can't do away with it because so long as there's electioneering, there's too many interests, so many interests that must be taken care of before the election, and this is what goes on. So it and it's cut across all parties, even though they say they, then they give shishi. They cut across because you are mobilizing people to come for your campaign rallies. You are mobilizing people, you are you are printing t-shirts, you are printing caps, you are sharing those things. So it's all in, in the in the ambient of vote buying. So for whatever it takes that uh, this present cash crunch is made to uh, to fight vote buying, I think it's a shallow and very narrow. A, a, a concept of the general principle of vote buying. If the vote has already been bought, if as at today, communities have not made up their mind who to vote for, institutions have not made up their mind who to vote for, then 
I, I don't think that institution is waiting on election day to queue up and get uh, 1,000 Naira or 500 Naira. I don't think so. Those ones that it can happen on the on the election day or pulling day, those ones are just, they are just a minute part of the entire bigger, bigger structure. So as far as I'm concerned, you can't do it with vote buying so long as African election is concerned. Or does it speak to the maturity of our democracy or you just feel it's African nature and there will never be a time where that will change? Well, because we are used to certain way of life, which I condemn really in all in petty, and I was telling for free, I have never received any of such inducement pre or during election. I have never. I've never even been in an association where they come and give money mobilize for us, I've never. That is for me. And of course, I condemn those. But you see, we're in an environment where um, we see the politician as those that can solve our problem individually. We don't see the politicians as those that can solve our problem collectively. And it's a mentality thing. We see them as those that can solve our problem individually. <coughs> so you see yourself as, okay, before we mobilize, you must give us something. It's a, it's a mental, it's, 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 a, it's, it's like a, a behavioral thing. Let me not say a cultural thing, it's a behavioral thing. And we have grown with it. And as the day goes by, we expand on it. Because people go to campaign in villages, they go to traditional rulers. You don't go to traditional rulers empty handed in this, in this country. You don't go to traditional rulers empty handed. It has been established norm. When you go to traditional rulers, you must go with something. And so that can cascade down. And so it's our way of life. You don't go and hold meetings with market associations, which we are looking for their vote, trade associations. You don't go there empty-handed. When you go there, you must, you, must, you must let them know you have come. So it's our pattern of behavior. And as far as I'm concerned, we can't get away or act out of it because it will be like, oh, you want to create a new... Ch as even those that say their slogan is, we know they give shish. It's a lie. So long as you go to those organizations, so long as you go to those interest groups, so long as you go to those associations that you need their support, you will give those shishi, more than shishi. That you don't give shishi on the streets, uh, uh, go to the road and start sharing shishi. Does not mean that when you go to those uh, stakeholders, the so-called assumed stakeholders, you do not mobilize. It's not, it's, so it may not <coughs> be away in the shortest possible time. Uh, okay, uh, Bayo, I, I leave him to you. Yes, um, Mr. Wilcox, thanks for your perspectives. Um, I, was, I, I agree with you that um, the, the manner in which we might vote or the manner of our electioneering process is definitively going to be a reflection of our values and our environment. Um, Although I don't agree that this is an African thing. I've worked in many African countries. I think we shouldn't generalize. If we have this problem in Nigeria, we should just limit ourselves to Nigeria. But I completely agree with, 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 your, with your expression. Um, now, do you think that our population are sensitized enough to understand the importance of voting the right people? Because when we keep accepting to be induced before we vote, and then we turn around to complain, you know, about the non-performance of the people we put there. Are we not ourselves actually, you know, uh, how do I say it now, architects of our own misgovernance? I am in total agreement of you, of what you are saying. You see, um, I remember in 2008, uh, when Obama was contesting for office, and I told somebody, I said, look, Obama cannot give anybody money to vote for him. Rather, people give Obama money to contest election. They say it's a lie. Never. How can that be? That Obama must have given people. I said, Obama, people give Obama money to contest election. And that is what it's supposed to be. But the unfortunate thing is the fact that we had excused poverty, which I don't believe that we are that abjectly poor. We had excused poverty. And we think Nigerian society is an abjectly poor society, which for me, it's a lie of the devil. Because um, the, the, every Nigerian is enterprising. And nobody sits at home and folds his hands. Even the man that sells pure water on the street, because of the size of our uh, economy and the size of our population, 
it's a big population that even though they sell pure water on the street, some of them are trained, they are trained in university. But unfortunately, we elites, we social media analysts, we analysts on TV and radio, we have changed the world to paint Nigeria as a poverty-stricken uh, country. And so we excuse people based on the fact that, oh, Nigerians are poor, they can't get the square meal, that's why they collect those money. But again, it's behavior, like I said, it's behavioral. And we only help to reinforce those behavioral attitudes. Look, I keep telling people every time I come, I say, look, I live in Shomoni. It's a sub, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, I mean, it's an, it's a low income area. But if you see the amount of money people spend there to drink beer, to drink, to drink pepper soup, a lot of money people spend on frivolities, parties, many ceremonies on a daily basis. If you compute those things, you will know that we are not a poor country in terms of individual. Yes, there are people who are unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But we have made ourselves in that light that if somebody wants to be 1,000 naira, if you come out to me and start sharing paper on the road, Nigeria is going to rush it. They don't know if it's on the paper. They have this sense of entitlement. They want to pick that thing that you want to get that looks free just to pay themselves that they are, of, they are unfortunate people. And I ask somebody, if on election day you get 1,000 or 1,500 from somebody, that cannot even give you a good pot of soup. So what do you eat other days that others do not give you money? You say because they are, because they are poor, they cannot feed themselves. So what do you eat after that? Have you gone to commit suicide? Have you had anybody commit suicide because he didn't have food to eat? So, we are, so it is a mental thing. And I think our video analysts, our TVs should start emphasizing to Nigerians the dignity of their personality. When you know the dignity of your personality, then you will know that you are not poor because you think you don't have money in your pocket. You are poor because you don't have an idea on your head or you feel bad or you feel low about your personality. So as far as I'm concerned, it's, 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 it's not because we are poor, but because we just have this sense of entitlement, this mm -hmm. sense of let me just grab what I can grab, let me just get that free thing, that free, let me just get it, and then and the other thing can take care of itself. Okay, now I want to take you to the uh, size, the sheer size of the landscape, the voting landscape for the presidential election. Uh, in the last elections, um, we had 119,973 polling units for the presidential election. This time, uh, 2023, INEC has increased the polling units to 176,846. Now, each presidential candidate, and we have 18 registered political parties, although I heard that five parties have endorsed one candidate, which we, so I begin, you begin to ask yourself why they are in the race in the first place. <laughs> but now we have a uh, we have 18 registered political parties, so we are going to have 13 presidential candidates. If five have already endorsed one person, so imagine now each presidential candidate must have a polling agent in each of the 176,846 polling units, and this has made even if you are paying a polling agent just five thousand naira. Right, some have argued that these are part of the things why our elections are so expensive, both for the political parties and for the state. And we are talking of vote buying. How do we? How 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 does this massive landscape, you know, affect the smaller parties or or weaken the smaller parties who are not able, who have nobody in government? They don't have any government. They don't have any. Senate or anything, and so they don't have access to, uh, as we know in the country, this is how parties command patronage, and which in, in turn may help them fight elections. So they are already disenfranchised, in quote, in some ways. So how do you see us dealing with this kind of problem? Because it's part of the uh, larger issue of heavily monetized electoral process. Look, for me, uh, I, I think the, the, the answer is not far-fetched. You play in the league that you know you can play. That you are a political party does not mean you must feel a presidential candidate. Look, I have I always argued on this front. There are some parties in the US and other places that they just concentrate in one county. 
the party you consider yourself in one county on one on one uh, uh, house of rep seats or house of assembly seat you say this seat we must keep it and you do everything within your part to keep that seat that is part of election that's part of the democracy mm -hmm. there are big parties there are small parties it, 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 not not i'm not trying to despise anybody but um a president candidate like showware you will know that the guy is only just trying to make noise he's a pretender <laughs> if not for the momentum that the people be gathered through the uh the eastern block and the uh, and the youth that set to uh, uh, uh propel him how could obi have even won election under labor party but right now because of the uh, momentum of the moment and people and youths and then the easterners now choose to support him and then begin to expand his ideology of course it's a good start in every in everywhere there are established parties even in the uk you have labor you have conservative mm -hmm. america you have democrats you have republican it doesn't exclude other parties they are out there so they choose where they have strength you cannot go and put agents in more than seventy four thousand local uh, uh, and as we are saying at least one and of course parties can have two they can have three you say at least one in every pulling unit so if you can have at least one agent and then it to be expensive that's why the, that's why the, the law even allows that the president candidate should have at least five billion to spend at least five billion house of rep at least i think it's 17 million or there about so they have there's a way they, they calculate their all their money because they know it's an expensive venture and because of that expense people are supposed to come together contribute and sponsor candidates you don't allow candidates to to use their own resources or to steal to sponsor themselves and that is why we keep shouting our country is not getting better it's not getting better i, I look i'm not a i i am not a, a an, an, an ob voter or endorsing but i like what people are doing for him you understand i like a lot of the things people are doing for him because this shows that okay a lot of people too believe in the fact that yeah. um they can they can have somebody i also like what people are doing for other parties for Tinubu, a lot of people do that, nobody for him to give them money. They on their own gather themselves and they are doing something. There's a candidate I have, a friend of mine who is running for House of Rep in, a, I think, a party NNPP in a, one of local, in one of the federal constituencies in Lagos. I like what, what he did. He called his friends, he called all of us together and said, This is what he wants to do. And people are contributing. Every day there's a WhatsApp group, people are contributing just for him to run that election. They are not waiting for him to give them money. No, people are contributing, which is who should be the way around. If believe in a candidate, go ahead, mobilize justice for him because it is expensive. Now, he's ready for a house of rep seat. And he, within that constituency, there might be nothing less than uh, 100 or there about uh, pulling units. So he has to pay agents, he has to put agents, you know. So people are now volunteering to contribute for him. Our size is big, for example, we're not bigger than India. India run election, we're not bigger than China. Okay, anyway, China is a unity state. But India run election, Brazil run election. These are also big countries. Indonesia run election. These are also very big, massive parts. So don't the US, don't talk about the US. They also run election. And they also have their own method. But the only problem we have is the fact that we expect the politicians to be the one that will give us money during the election. Rather than we contributing to the person we want, to the candidate that we felt can deliver for us, and we give such candidate uh, support to enable us to I mean to enable us get good representative. We are, we are getting there with what happened with what's happened during this uh, in this election with the obedient movement and with some other persons that have decided to help other candidates i think nigerians by and large will come a bit the positions like you said they are smarter they will always want to let the people know that they have things they give them they have gifts and all that and so that will continue but of course we've been hearing it over and over take their money don't vote for them it doesn't work <laughs> it's for, it, it doesn't work it's for you to know who you are and we, we the, the elite that comes on radio and TV, to keep educating the society on the, on the, to change the narrative so that people will start realizing the fact that it is the other way around, not the way we are going right now. It is the other way around that will give us a sustainable uh, a democracy and a good representation when, when people find, uh, eventually get to power. My last question for you will be on, I just speak on what you just said. You made a valid point. I mean, you made really great points. Uh, you made one, one valid point that I also like, which is that we need to keep educating our people. And this is where, even on, on, on the run-up, 
Yangul and I and some of our guests, we've always asked this question, where is a national orientation agency? <laughs> under, under the Buhari administration, uh, it's so sad that we, we, it's like the National Orientation Agency does not exist, but we have checked. It is still existing. It has a director general. So what, what do you, what is your assessment? I'm, I hope I haven't biased your comment. But what is your assessment of the National Orientation Agency and what should it be doing at crucial moments like this? Yeah. Sincerely, sincerely, it has, I have answered this question many for us and I have been very sad about it, very, very sad. Um, I remember in 1984 when the white, uh, the white against the discipline mantra came down, when we had a white brigade, mm. and then um, when we had the, the then uh, it metamorphosed to Mamsa. Yes. When uh, Babangida came to power, I brought up now Mamsa. And Jerry Ghana. Mm. Yes, and the, oh, yeah, under Jerry Ghana, which changed the mentality of Nigerians. In no small way, I was still young, very young then. I'm not old, but I was very, very young. And <laughs> when these institutions were, I was a member of the of the Mamsa Brigade, from White Brigade to Mamsa Brigade. I was a member, and it gave us nationalism. In fact, whatever I feel today, whatever I feel today about the love of my country, I think that agency gave it to me because I was so patriotically glued to those agencies and the message they passed on. And then, as time goes on, it now changed to national regional agency. And um, under this administration, like you said, it's a zero. It's a, in fact, it's it's a totally comatose agency. They are nowhere to be. I have I've engaged some of them in an in for a, I was on a program with one of the directors, and when I wrote back, Mamsa and White to him, he said that he started working during that period. And I'm like, so what happened? Hmm. There's budget allocation. You have your budget. There's every year budget allocation. We've never had national research agency to organize anything. I even offered to say, look, I will work for you free. I offered to national to the. I said, please, then give me. I work for you free. Give me platform. Give me a message. I'll pass them for you free. You know, these government agencies, uh, because the president allow people to do what they want to do. He appoints them, he allows them to do it. It's supposed to be about the use of information yeah. and, and natural orientation. The use of information itself, how has this performed? We have a man like, like Mohammed around the use of information. How has it performed? NT and the and the and the and the region Nigeria, Nigeria. How has they performed? How have they performed? Voice of Nigeria, how has it performed? Today, the airwave of the private media has taken over the narratives. They have not, they, 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 they did not, they did not reinvent themselves to make themselves relevant when the airwaves of these private media are taking over and changing narratives. And just and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, a, a renowned journalist like Lai Mohammed is just sitting there and once in a while come up to give back. He is a to, that, that the information machinery of the government is a total failure. And that is why the Board Administration has so much bad negativity, despite all that they've achieved. We go out to tell people what this government achieved. The government is in itself is not telling people what they have achieved. We have made enemies because of our stand, our positive stand about the country and about the government. Meanwhile, the people that are paid salary, that are eating fat on the government, are not doing are not even doing the government a service by even propagating <coughs> what they do. How do you want to watch NT? How do you want to listen to Raising Nigeria? Because it's not attractive. It has not been invented to make it attractive. Mm -hmm. But that is where the government machinery should be coming from. The to, 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 to really change people's mentality, to give people something to vote for. But today, it's every flight by nine media house, online online media house, all the flight by nine AOPs okay, that does not even understand the thing they are doing. They are the ones that have taken the narrative. And the government agencies have gone to the background. Rather sad and unfortunate. I still give them, I'm still offering them my service free of charge to the natural <laughs> agency. If they're interested, give me the narrative, I will help you. Okay. Um, at, no cost, at no cost to you. 
That's patriotism, Mr. Wilcox. Thank you so much for offering your services to Nigeria. I hope that they will listen, but don't worry. We will engage you when the time comes so that uh, you do what we need you to do. But you're already doing it anyway uh, by being a part of our program and uh, talking to us. Uh, we do hope that we'll have more people like you that will volunteer to say what they need to say to the right people so that the right things get to be done. Thank you so much for being a part of our program today. I'm most honored. Thank you very much. May God bless Nigeria and may God keep protecting our troops. Thank you. Amen. Okay, that was Mr. Uh, Alexa Wilcox talking to us on new strategies that the politicians are devising to uh, do vote buying. And he gave us a very broad explanation or a definition of vote buying, which we have been talking about on this show. But um, the, the people that matter, the people who really uh, gave us the word vote buying, are saying that it's on election day that you can say that someone has bought votes. Meanwhile, Mr. Le uh, uh, Wilcox is saying that it goes beyond that. Saying on election day is just a limitation of what it could be. But we have another thing to discuss today, and that is that uh, the governors have no right to challenge Buhari, that's the president, on the Naira redesign. We'll be talking with Barrister Abumere Osare, who is um, a legal practitioner and a notary public. We take a break now, and when we return, we meet with Barrister. Stay with us.